many grade sixes. I'm very excited to get started with you. We're going to start with a little bit of poetry and comprehension just to get a feel for what we're going, kind of thing we're going to be doing this year. We're going to be starting with a poem by Roger McGuff. He's a British poet, so he's from the UK, from England, and the poem is called First Day at School. I don't want you to worry too much if you come across words you don't understand. And when answering the questions, I don't want you to feel stressed or pressured. Obviously, in the classroom situation, I will be walking around and helping you and helping you along. But for now, we're just going to do our best. All right. I'm going to go line by line, and I'm going to just explain a little bit about the meaning to help you with answering the questions. Okay. First Day at School by Roger McGuff. A million, billion, billion miles from home. Now you can hear by that million, billion, billion that he's a very small child. He's using baby language. And home seems a very, very, very far from the school. Waiting for the bell to go. To go away. Now, this child is small. He literally thinks that the bell is going to literally go somewhere and that's what they're waiting for he hasn't learned the language of school so if you told him the bell is going to go and then we're going to the principal and then in the second period we're going to assembly he wouldn't have any idea what you were saying the third line why are they all so big are the children now this child has probably been at home with mummy or daddy or granny or grandpa maybe They've been at crash along with other small children, and they certainly didn't expect the children at school to be so much bigger. It might seem silly, but if you're a very small child in grade R or maybe double R, a grade seven can look very, very big. So noisy. Now, they're talking about the other children. Now, school, compared to home, can be a very loud place. Going from the quiet comfort of your home into the playground where the big children rushing and running and screaming and yelling can be very overwhelming. Now, they're still talking about the other children. So much at home. They must have been born in uniform, lived their lives in playgrounds. They talk about the other kids, the bigger children, the ones that are comfortable in school already, the ones where school is already their second home. The children, spent the years inventing games. Now, he doesn't know the games that the children are playing. So the big kids, they're running around, they're singing songs, they're using slang, all of these things that are, that are confusing and unknown to the little child on their first day of school. Inventing games that don't let me in. So these games exclude him. So, you know, the big children don't like to play with the little ones usually in their games. Bigger children are more competitive and they're not patient to play with small children often. So he's too small to play those games and he feels left out. Good. He's still talking about the games. Games that are rough, that swallow you up. So these games are rough games. The kids are running in all directions. They're touching and pushing, maybe kicking and shoving. And it's all very overwhelming for a small child standing in the middle of the playground watching others rush by. So we're going to go into the second stanza. Remember a stanza is just like a paragraph in poetry. And we know the second stanza is starting because they've left the line. And the railings, all around the railings, now, the railings are the fence that go around the school. So just like we have those um, palisade fencing. That just tells you that the building itself is strange and confusing to the child. Are they, they're talking about the railings, the fence. Are they to keep out wolves and monsters? So, you know, small children have a very vivid imagination. And he's scared and anxious being in a new place. So he's imagining maybe monsters, um, I don't know what, giants or creatures, fairy tale creatures that are just outside the school fence. Maybe the rains are 
to keep out things that carry off and eat children. Oh my goodness, scary stuff. Maybe the railings are there to keep out things that you don't take sweets from. Mm. The big, biggest fear of lots of small children, not the monster under your bed, but stranger danger. So yes, maybe his mum or his dad has given him a little talk about all the things he shouldn't do. Don't go out the gate, it's not safe. Or don't take sweets from strangers. And now it's really getting him nervous. Perhaps they're, again, we're talking about the fence. Perhaps they're there to stop us getting out. Oh my goodness. It's like the children are trapped animals in a zoo. Oh my goodness. Perhaps they're to stop us getting out, running away from the lesson. Listen. Now, do you see the way they've spelled listen? L-E-S-S-I-N. It's not because the poet doesn't know how to spell listen. L-E-S-S-O-N. It's written that way to remind us that this is from a child's point of view. And children often mishear words or sounds. So when a person said listen, that's what he imagines it looks like. Now, remember, children think a little bit differently. If you have younger brothers or sisters, I'm sure you, you know how they can get very confused hearing one thing and thinking another thing. So this child is so inexperienced, they've never been to school before, and they don't even know what a lesson looks like. They're imagining that the, a lesson is a thing, maybe a creature or an animal. What does a lesson look like? Hmm. Sounds small and slimy. Oh, listen to that lovely alliteration. Sounds, alliteration, yes. Sounds, small and slimy. Alliteration is when we repeat a sound, sometimes at the beginning of a word, we do it for a fit. So sounds, small and slimy. Whatever it is, a lesson does not sound like something pleasant. It's not something nice in this child's mind. The lessons, they keep them in the glass rooms. His imagination is really running away with him. It's really running wild. Now, do you think he's going to be disappointed when he goes to what he thinks is a glass room and he finds it's just a boring old room with desks and chairs? Now, he's heard the word classroom, but in his mind, he thinks it's glass room. Whole rooms made of glass. Imagine. Wow. <laughs> now we're going to go on to the third and last stanza. I wish I could remember my name. Mommy said it would come in useful. Now, I don't think the child doesn't know he has a name. I think what's happened is well, I have a feeling that at home, his family calls him something else. And they've told him that at school, his teachers are going to call him by another name. So maybe it's a case of everybody always calling him pumpkin or sweetie or sweet cheeks at home. And now they've been told that you must always make sure that people call you. Hmm. Or perhaps everyone at home calls him by a nickname or by a shortened name or by another name. And they've told the child, when you go to school, on the class list, your name is going to be <laughs> So when the teacher says, <laughs> then you need to say, present. And now the child is awfully confused. Why does everyone call me one name when I'm at home or in my community? And now when I go to school, the teachers are going to suddenly call me by another name. It is very confusing, I'm sure. So I wish I could remember my name. Mummy said it would come in useful. Something else that is useful, like wellies. Now, if you don't know what wellies means, then read the next part of the sentence and it'll give you a clue. Like what come in useful, like wellies, when there's puddles. So what do we use wellies for? Wellies is a shortened word for Wellington boots. So Wellington boots are those thick gum boots that people put on. Now, in South Africa, we call them gumboots, and mostly we might wear gumboots for work or for working, but in the UK, where it rains for much of the year, 
often children put on Wellington boots or rain boots to protect their shoes. Right. So Wellingtons or wellies when there's puddles. So Wellingtons we use when it rains to protect our shoes or our feet from getting wet. Yellow wellies. Okay, the small child is getting a lot of pleasure thinking about the nice yellow rain boots. He's remembering his mum and the things his mum said were useful, like knowing his name and like wellies. And then he starts to feel that horrible feeling in his tummy. I wish she was here. He wishes his mum was there. He misses his mum. Come to think of it, I think my I think my name is sewn on somewhere. So he remembers seeing his mum putting his name somewhere. He's trying to have a look to see if it will jog his memory. Maybe he's looking under his shoes to see if it's written there. Last two lines. Perhaps the teacher will read it for me, his name. He suddenly remembered that his mum said, there's going to be someone at school to help you. Your teacher will help you. So perhaps the teacher will read it for me. Teacher. Wondering what the teacher does. Aha, the one who makes the tea. So this child is trying to make sense of all of these foreign words. Teacher doesn't sound like someone who teaches, but rather like someone who makes the tea. So I think this child is going to have a very confusing and strange time at school on this first day, as soon as the bell goes. He'll find himself in a classroom rather than a classroom. He'll find himself with children of all different shapes and sizes, all making a loud noise. And the lesson will start, and it might be something where he'll have to sit still at his desk and do something he's not used to doing. And all being led, of course, by the teacher, and there might be no tea in sight. All right. So again, the poem is about it's small child's experience on their first day of school. I don't know what your first day of school was like when you were in grade double R or R or grade one. Um, you might want to compare it to first day at creche. Did you run out onto the schoolyard and leave your parents behind in the dust? Or did you maybe hang on to mommy's leg, not want to let go, or cry in the car, not want to leave? Maybe your teacher had to pull you away from mommy and push you toward the class. So whatever your experience was, I hope it was a little bit less confusing than this little guy. So there are some questions. The questions are not all easy. They are challenging. They're meant to be challenging, but I'm not going to judge you if you can't answer everything now. These are skills and concepts that we're going to be working on during the year. So this is kind of just a practice. What I'm concerned about this year is the way that you structure your answers. So even if your answer is incorrect or you're taking a guess sometimes an educated guess i want you to practice writing detailed elaborate answers in other words i don't want to see one or two words just scribbled down in your most untidy writing i want you to think carefully about what you're going to say and almost say it in your head before you write it down and then once you have a clear idea of what you want to say i want you to word it nicely in full sentences, write in detail, explain your thinking, because this year we're going to grow from emerging writers and emerging read readers into really skilled um, individuals who can go into high school soon enough, um, being able to answer uh, in a really deep way. Okay, so I'm very excited to get started with this process with you. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed or frustrated at any point in answering these. If you're not sure, I'd like you to take a guess. But again, don't pull your hair out if you're struggling to understand something. All right, looking forward to working with you. Tomorrow, I'm going to go through these questions and answers with you. I'll explain those concepts and language concepts. And everything should become clear by the end of tomorrow, at least. All right, take care. Thank you.